<laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Seraphine Podcast. I am Seraphina Rocha, and today we have my dear friend Jennifer Tierney with me. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, this podcast has been um, in the making for over a year. When I started the podcast, she was one of the first people I wanted to get in the chair. And I finally now, after all of the craziness of being cooped up, we are now face to face. I'm here. I love it. I'm in the chair. I'm so excited. <laughs> so you might be wondering, who is Jennifer Tierney? Well, she is the designer of Jean Nuage, which is a, how would you describe it? We are a women's wear lifestyle brand. So we believe at the core of what it is that we're doing, that women are born powerful. And everything we do and everything we make is based off the fact that women deserve to be fashionable, have garments that are fun and flirty and feminine, but still be able to move around. And dare I say it, be comfortable. Oh my God. Right? <laughs> pockets and knits, pockets and knits. You know, so we design really day wear, mm -hmm. but it's day wear that can be styled to lounge wear, can be styled to evening wear. And it's, it's a lifestyle brand. I love it. So the first time I actually got to experience Jennifer and her as a designer was at the West 18th Street Fashion Show. And that was under J. Tierney Designs, correct? Correct. So talk to me about how, what came first? Because, you know, Jean Nuage was definitely something that was in you, but Jennifer Tierney was what I was introduced to. That's a great question. So I, I started as a costume designer. So that's what led me into design, is I own a ballet school and I needed to design costumes for our big productions that we do. And I didn't speak the language and I couldn't speak to other designers and I couldn't speak to seamstresses. And I knew it was me, not them. And so I started teaching myself to design. I loved it and then really dove into costume design. And at a certain point, I realized that while I love design and I love the creative outlet that it gave me, I didn't love that after the show was over, the costumes went into a bag <laughs> and they were they were done, you know? And I, I think, so I was a dancer for 17 years, a professional dancer. I loved being in the studio and I loved working in my garments, you know, mm -hmm. and I loved working and I wore a different leotard every day and it was like my thing and my fashion. So I went, you know what? I love designing, but I want to design clothes that women live in, that they work in you know, and, and they wear them out. Mm -hmm. They don't wear them once and then put them back in the closet. They like literally wear them until they disintegrate and they wish that, that they would have purchased more, yeah. you know, right when they, the design came out. So I changed from costume design into active wear. Which I which bet, was me. Yes. That, was, that was actually, that truly is my that, first experience with it. That was the it. first experience yep. with you and I yep. and me designing and you being a total muse for my active wear. Yep. Is I went, I want to design clothes that women really wear. It would be an absolute dream and I'd be totally honored if a woman woke up on her birthday and said, I need that Jean Nuage piece. Is it clean? Yep. You know, like that would be just an absolute dream come true. So I started going down that route, but I knew my strength was in costuming and I knew my creativity and my love for just doing wild things and finding the fringe of an idea, like going to the edge where it's like almost not accessible. Where people yeah. are like, what is this woman doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I love being in that space. I knew I needed that. So I started with wanting to design women or wanting, wanting to design clothes for women, but costume was my strength. So I went to Jay Tierney Designs first and Couture first to find my voice. Mm -hmm. I did seven fashion shows in 14 months. That's insane. And I do remember, you know, in the beginning, uh, Jennifer and I became friends when I moved here um, from New York 
And I was kind of getting reacclimated with Kansas City because I had lived here in my 20s. And I had a career that was a little bit niche. Um, I was like yoga, dance instructor, and I came back to Kansas City where it just wasn't a competitive market with New York. And I was lucky enough um, to meet Jennifer through a very good friend of mine, Tony Wett, who is her her partner. And um, life is weird. It's that so way. weird how it all <laughs> turns out. But uh, I worked in his ballroom studio, and then she spoke to me and was like, "Look, you know, it would be nice for you to come and teach my students." And I. I met you this way very organically. And then the first time I was really understanding her talent in clothing and design was she had a ballet that was at Johnson County Community College here um, through American Dance Center. And it was Swan Lake. And you literally, I mean, to imagine this, Jennifer is this striking, like small, you know, ballet body, former dancer with this shock of beautiful auburn hair. And you'll you'll see her at this table with the sewing machine and all this tulle and all these tutus and, and these bodices. And I remember walking in, I'm like, you're doing all, all, like literally all of, of, the costumes a lot and she was yes. like well yes I have a few handmaids behind me right <laughs> and I mean it was amazing to see what you put together in such a short amount of time and at that time you had no training you were self-taught no yeah so I think you know I'm I I try to convince myself to be what I call the cannonball kid mm -hmm. there's always like a daycare camp that comes to the pool Right, and you're sitting at the pool and you're trying to have a nice day. Mm -hmm. And the daycare camp comes in and you're like, it's over, the nice day is over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, yeah. but like, you're like, I love kids. So I love to just watch the dynamics of kids. And there's like a group of kids and they're sitting with the camp counselors and they're putting their suntan lotion on and there's like some other kids and they're, they're getting ready to get in the pool and they're hanging out with their friends. There's one child who just runs out of the pack no sunscreen, doesn't even take off their t-shirt, and just does a flying leap dive cannonball into the center of the pool. There's always one kid. Always. Who runs out and That's is my just husband. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's my husband. Like total oh. abandon, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, that kid gets it. He knows why we're here. <laughs> like, he's not messing around. Yeah. And as soon as he gets into the pool, he can now enjoy his time. He's in the pool, he's in, he's swimming around, He's doing what he came to do. And I'm like, God, I got to be that kid. Yeah. You know, I just got to be that kid. And I got to dive in. So um, I wanted to learn how to sew. Mm -hmm. I decided I don't know how to speak this language. I need to figure this out. And so I think normally people would use a pair of pajama pants as their first project. No, I used that Swan Lake <laughs> as my first project. And I didn't design the whole thing. I didn't do the classical tutus. Mm -hmm. So some people call them pancake tutus, right? But the really stiff ones. And those are a complete specialty. They're very difficult. But I did a ton of the romantic tutus and the bodices. And that was all the tool wow. that you saw. And the learning that I received from that was in a ballet, there are 12 to 16 gals per cost per group. Yeah. So you're making the same costume 12 times. So poor Susie, who got costume number one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but by the time I got to 12, I had figured it out, yeah. whatever it was. If it was a bodice, if it was how to gather and how to group you know, for a romantic tutu, if it was a waistband, if it was whatever, by number 12. I had it down. I love it. <laughs> so I love it. I like to look back and go, oh, that was the first one I did, you know, and like see yeah. if I can grab it and redo it now at this point now that I really know. But then I did start going to school. Yeah. So I did start trying to receive real training because as a ballet trained person, you just it's nice to stand on a foundation of knowledge. Yeah. It is fun to kind of figure things out on your own, yeah. you know. But you're learning from a teacher who knows nothing when you're self-taught yeah. or knows as much as you, you know. Yeah. 
So it is so great to have mentors. It is so great to stand on truths, Mm -hmm. you know, a path that people have walked hundreds of years before you and go, this is the way to do it. I can stick to this or I can veer off this path if I feel like it. But I know that this is the the way, the standard way. So there are a lot of brands out there where the person who's created the brand doesn't know how to sew. What is your advice to people out there right now who may want to dabble in fashion or 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 be the kid who jumps right in like you? The cannonball um, kid. What is the, the cannonball kid? What do you t- what do you tell them if they're like, I don't know if I could go to school for this? There is a ton of avenues that you can take and be involved in fashion. And so I think that by going to school, you start to realize what all of the different options are. And when we met and I was doing, you know, West 18th Street and you really got to see me as a designer for the first time, I didn't realize at that point that literally every single thing that I was doing to make that collection is a full-time job for somebody, for a big brand. You know, you do not have to do every single piece of it yourself. You can specialize in a number of different ways. You can you can specialize in merchandising yeah. if you want to go into merchandising and you don't like sewing, you know, and you don't want to be the person who's like hands on. And designers, yeah, they they don't sew. I mean, I'm not sewing nearly as much now that we have so my brand G Nuage just had this Gerber build out, which is a technology that is used to design on the computer. It's a CAD technology mm-hmm. and it comes with a plotter, yes. eventually. I've learned what a plotter is. <laughs> I love it. I What did I call it before? I, I had a great name for it. I think it was like a, gosh, I, I, I made up a name for it. I was like, uh, it was, I'll, it'll come to me <laughs> yep. so bad. And we were going to make a plaque and there was a whole thing. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so now we've really got to meditate on what this original name yes. was. Yes, yes. But so it's yeah. essentially, if you don't know, it's a, it's a big printer. And there are, are many different brands of plotters, but this is very much for this software. And so I'm on the software designing. I draw and I plan collections and I I build out the architecture of the clothing now. I don't sew as much. So, but in the beginning, like that's, if I didn't know how to do that, I definitely wouldn't be making the smartest decisions Mm -hmm. as far as how exactly do you curve these lines to make them more flattering, Mm -hmm. to make them more cost effective, you know, and to just be really efficient. You want the garment to be as easy to produce as possible. Mm -hmm. So having a sewing background and having sewing knowledge, that's, you know, important, I think, in the end, but not you know, you're not going to do all the jobs and, and you don't really get to realize that unless you go to school and you see what's available. So where do you usually draw your inspiration in the past? Where have you and where where do you feel it going now? Inspiration is literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. So if you're someone who loves inspiration or is doing a job that's highly creative, it's important that you can see it at any time, at any point and just anywhere. Um, I, I love to look at architecture. I love buildings. I love, um, I love to be in a setting that has some sort of water feature. Right? You do. <laughs> yeah. She loves a good water I feature, do. people. I love it. <laughs> you should see her yard. Doug. Oh. Yeah, so I have two large ponds in my backyard. One I dug because I was so angry last year during the pandemic. I got out a <laughs> shovel and I dug a pond. They're and like, now, is she burying a dead body? Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I was oh, so mad. So I'm funny. sure my neighbors thought I was going to bury my boyfriend. Oh. But no, so so yeah, I, I love waterfalls and I love landscaping and I love, um, I really love traveling to a new space and getting lost. Yeah. Like just driving into a city, turning off Google Maps yeah. And just like trying to find my way around and like that part of my brain and seeing new things and trying to navigate helps me to navigate in creative problem solving ways. Mm-hmm. So I don't know, it, it might be inspiration, it might be kind of the tool that I use to like wake up that part of my brain. 
but I, I do really love to get lost in the project. It's the cannonball kid. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like dive in and start swimming around. I don't really have a starting point in my process. I like to get into the middle, mess everything up, like completely blow it up. And that's anytime I learn something. So when I learned uh, Shopify is the website that I use to host my e-commerce platform, to host my Gene Wash site. And when I was learning Shopify, which I'm not, I have no background in e-commerce, Yeah. right? So I got in there and I just started setting off flags everywhere. And they emailed me and they said, lady, if you don't reverse what you've done, we're shutting down your website. Because <laughs> I just click every button. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so that is really where I find inspiration. It's losing myself in a concept. And that's why I love Alexander McQueen. It was so interesting to hear you speak about the words because I get lost in the visuals and get lost in the concept. And I love that he does that as well. And it just everything in each collection really embodies. There's nothing in a collection that looks like he was trying to do something that appeals to someone. A hundred percent. You know, like it's like I live here now and so do you. And I just love that intensity of committing to an idea. Yeah. You know, he's he's in the middle of the idea and he's finding every edge around him. And so as a designer, that as just a way of being brave yeah. too. Cause you you kind of want to go, ooh, should I like put in this thing that's current right now? Yeah. More that commercial. Someone's yeah. gonna like. Yeah. You know? And so that is where I start. Mm-hmm. And, and when I did the seven shows in 14 months or whatever it was, I found my voice. Mm-hmm. Where's the center of my voice? You know, and then how do I give this voice to a lifestyle brand? That was really the benefit of starting with Jay Tierney Designs, going all in, doing all of these collections, finding the couture, finding the wild, finding who I am as a creative in this genre, and then saying, okay, what do I want to wear that's in this voice and not, not leave it and stay true to myself, but make sure that it is, they are garments that belong in a closet, not in a museum. I love that. I, I love, I love talking to you because, you know, there's, there's something that, you know, from the moment I met you that I, I knew that we had in common was it really is setting a stage um, and not as not performing. I don't mean that in a posturing way. I mean it as in when you walk even into your from your office to your home, to your backyard, to your classroom, you have a feeling. And that is something that is like you can't put value on that when you go in and you because people brand themselves and that makes me want to shoot myself because (laughs) if you are somebody who has wakes up every day and feels something different Mm -hmm. um when you're stuck into a brand and you're literally cutting pictures out of your instagram because it didn't match a certain design tile right it it crushes i think the the inner creative cannonball kid that we both have in each other uh, or have inside of us um but I know for a fact that when I am in your presence, whether it be in your home, whether it be even if I'm meeting you out at a restaurant, I know usually you'll drink tea. Usually you'll, you'll have like a beautiful, <laughs> bold lip. Usually Truth. you have like these. I, I remember the first time I met her, she had like long gloves. We're talking like the kind of gloves that look like you should be going to go, you know, like casually meet the queen, but like, (laughs) and she rocked it. So it's like you give, you have always set the stage and you've always set the tone to where I know that I am in, in a little piece of your world. And it's so cool. I, and I, I, that's why I'm such not just a friend, but a, a fan and a champion of what you do because it's, it's beyond branding. So you bring us into something really special. Lady, I am your fan 100%. So the feeling yeah. is mutual. There's some quote 
and I cannot quote things, and I, I, I blame my mother. I think I, I, her, I inherited this from her, where we say sayings completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, really convinced that yeah. that's the saying. So I know I'm going to get this wrong, and shout out to my mom. She's an amazing human being. But um, so it's you're going to make the space beautiful, right? So it's like the idea that you're going to create this beauty around you, and that's going to be your life. I 100% <laughs> subscribe to that. And I, I frankly can't leave well enough alone. So like I love to recreate my space or yeah, my outfit every day, mm -hmm. right? And, and I wake up and I think that I have a distinct style, but inside of that world of all of those pieces, I mean, it's just, I think it's more exhausting to just set things into neutral. Yeah. You know, I think it really is that wears you out. It's so much more fun to put crazy wallpaper on the walls and like paint in wild colors and I know that beige is having a moment yeah. but like what about everything else, else too? Right? <laughs> <I know. laughs> like and I love a neutral palette but yeah I, I think it starts to become exhausting to not just go with your wild hair like just go with it and I love that you notice it. I love casually meeting the queen. I love right, just <laughs> casually, just in case. It's but Can it's I so true. Right? Yes, stone. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. She's casually, casually meeting, meeting the, queen the queen today. Uh, <laughs> well, on on that note, um, we have more with this incredible woman. But for now, you're going to have to click like and subscribe to my podcast to know when her next episode is coming up for part two of my sit down with Jennifer Tierney. Thanks for listening.